Let's take two guys with different levels of fitness and tell them to run three laps around a 400 meter track in six minutes. 400 meters, 800 meters, 1200, done. Now, were they both running with the same intensity? Tell us what you think in the comments down below. Aloha sportsmen, and today we're going to talk about a very important metric for your running workouts, your heart rate. Here's the thing, even if it's not two people with different levels of fitness, even if it's just me running the same distances and the same times, my workouts will still differ in intensity. You might be asking yourself, how's that even possible? Well, it's simple. When I run on the track, on sand, uphill, or in windy weather, my running load is always different. But back to our guys, they've run a distance of 1200 meters at the same pace, but failed to meet the given time for these three laps, which was six minutes. Suppose I knew nothing about their fitness levels, so I gave them a vague task. Because anyone can run 1200 meters. It's not a big deal, right? And they were both running at a medium pace, and it's only based on their heart rate and that we were able to determine the exact level of intensity for each of these guys. Here are their heart rates during the exercise. Heart rate is an objective metric which is used to determine the intensity of exercise in continuously changing workout conditions and measuring your heart rate during your runs will help you train the right way. And also consider this, together with what I mentioned before, you also want to know your resting heart rate because this parameter tells you whether you are having sufficient rest for recovery. At rest, your heart keeps an even and steady beat of about 60 to 80 beats per minute and your maximum resting heart rate shouldn't be over 100 beats per minute. As I'm sitting here, being filmed, I'm calm and my heart rate is about mm, 60 beats per minute. But can I take it as my normal resting heart rate and compare it for instance to my heart rate in the morning after I wake up? And the answer is no. You see, in order to compare it, your heart rate has to be measured in the same environment, same place, same position, same situation. And when do you think we always have the same conditions? That's right, when we wake up in the morning. If you wake up and see that your heart rate is higher than usual, it may be a sign of either overtraining or not getting enough sleep or too much stress the day before. So for maximum efficiency and also to prevent overtraining, each training program is developed using heart rate zones. Traditionally, they're determined based on your maximum heart rate. For example, 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate is your easy run zone. You may ask, why not just use resting heart rate calculation? Of course you can do it, but as you get fitter, your resting heart rate decreases. Mine at this point is 45 beats per minute, while two years ago, it was 55 beats per minute. In our video on how running affects your heart, I spoke about the difference between the heart of athletes and non-athletes. This is how much blood your heart pumps if you're a non-runner or a novice runner. However, the heart of a well-trained athlete is larger and stronger. It can pump from 25 to 40 liters in one minute. Unlike your resting heart rate, your peak heart rate doesn't change in this manner. My current maximum heart rate is 189 beats per minute, even on days when I haven't slept well or I'm tired. It's just that during a workout you reach it sooner if you're exercising at a higher intensity or you haven't had enough sleep or you're overstressed. There's a sad formula for finding your maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus your age. Why do I call it sad? Because first, it suggests that your maximum heart rate is something that cannot be changed through training. And second, that your maximum heart rate changes with age. And now let's see if that's actually true. You can measure your resting heart rate no matter how fit or well trained you are. But when it comes to finding your maximum heart rate, some training is essential. You have at least two or three months or running practice under your belt. Boris is 38 years old. And according to this formula, 
His maximum heart rate should be 182 beats per minute. There are numerous tests for finding your peak heart rate. However, we are going to do a simple test that I often use. Boris, here's what you're gonna do. First, you warm up. 10 minutes of easy running with 360 meter sprints, that's your warm up. Then, you're going to do two reps of 800 meters with five minutes of easy running between them. During those 800 meter runs, you run at a maximum pace for this distance, okay? You are to give it all you can, but whenever you feel like sprinting all out, remember that you need to have some energy left for the final part. After that, you're gonna run a bit to cool down and we will be measuring your heart rate the whole time. Remember that your heart rate may peak after you finish your 800 run because of the heart rate's inertia. What it actually means is that after shifting to an easy pace, your heart rate may keep rising for a few seconds. Speed up! Okay, speed up, then finish the lap at an easy pace. And we get started. Speed up after the corner. Now! Come on, come on, keep it up. A hundred meters to go. Hold it, hold it, 50, speed up, now. Keep that pace for two laps. Don't speed up, second to 800. Keep the pace, keep it. Go for it. 30 seconds left, give it all you got. Everything you got, 10 meters. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, take it easy. Jog for 10 minutes, three more laps. That'll be a recovery run. We found that Boris's maximum heart rate is 194 beats per minute, which is 12 BPM more than the estimate we got from using the formula. That's a significant difference. As for me, my maximum heart rate according to the formula is 180 BPM, while my actual peak heart rate is 189. So, your maximum heart rate is unique to you and varies between people. In some, it's a bit higher, in some, a bit lower. That's why using formulae to determine your heart rate will give you an inaccurate result. There are several heart rate zone systems, based on a different number of zones. Five, seven, nine, or even more. It's not always clear why you need that many zones. I, for example, use a four zone system, and for beginners, there's just one zone, and they don't even need to do any calculations. They should just stick to their conversational pace. Let's see how these four zones affect my ability to hold a conversation. As you can see, I'm talking to you comfortably without getting out of breath. This is my easy run zone, which is 60 to 70% of my maximum heart rate. This is the zone where your heart stretches to its full extent. I talked about it in one of our earlier videos. This is the zone of maximum health benefits because that's where your body burns the most fat. In fact, even advanced runners spend up to 80% of their training time in the zone. And as a beginner, you want to stay in it the whole time, okay? Now let's speed up. My pace is now higher and that's why I have to make stops while speaking to catch my breath. This is an aerobic or moderate intensity zone, which is 70 to 80% of my maximum heart rate. This is where you are training to increase your ability to transport and utilize oxygen that your body needs to produce energy. Speeding up a bit more. And now I have to make longer pauses between phrases. What that means, this is hard or high intensity zone. We're training our speed endurance during intense exercise and learn to run longer at a higher heart rate. Mine now is about 150 to 165 BPM. If I run faster, I'll get into a maximum intensity zone where you basically develop your anaerobic and speed 
capacities. My heart rate in zone 4 ranges from 165 BPM to my maximum number of beats. And there is no talking in this zone. Many beginners run too fast too soon. They max out right away at a heart rate of 180 and more until they are on the verge of blacking out. Overloading your body in this way is very bad for you and you won't even enjoy your runs at all. At a heart rate of 180, there's hardly any pleasure. So if you're a total beginner, forget about any pace other than easy pace, where you can easily hold a conversation, in case you have company, of course. Otherwise, you must use a heart rate monitor. Of course, there's an old school way of measuring your heart rate. Find your carotid artery, put two fingers on it, Count the beats for 10 seconds and multiply them by 6. But that's an inconvenient and inaccurate method, and you won't be able to do it while running. That's why we have heart rate monitors, chest straps, wristbands, or smartwatches. In my experience, a smartwatch is only good for measuring your resting heart rate in everyday situations. I recommend using a chest strap, like this one here, or an armband. They have a sensor that measures your heart rate and sends the data directly to your smartwatch. So you can constantly monitor your heart rate while you're running. If you're a beginner, then your heart rate must be the primary metric to measure your runs to. Not your pace and not your speed, but your heart rate and the workout time you've been training at this heart rate. Many popular running apps seem to push you to compete, to increase your distance, speed, or pace. Novice runners should be careful and always think before doing that. By using heart rate zones, you'll be able to develop a training program and adjust your workouts to make better progress. It will help you to compete consciously and mindfully, and most importantly, to really enjoy your running. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with the heartbeat of our channel, and make sure to watch our video on how running affects your heart. That video will help you to better understand everything that we've been discussing today.